What's up, everybody? This is Dan Physics from Ex Machina Soundworks here in Brooklyn, New York. And today we're here with the one and only Richie Beretta. What's up, man? How you doing? What up, dude? Hi. I'm glad you're here. It's uh, been, been looking forward to this for a while. So you know, now, now that you moved from New York, we don't get to hang out as much. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No more, uh, no more, no more bullshitting after, uh, after like hanging out at the shop. For like eight years and, and making me slack off. I'm sure you remember. You're probably more productive now that I left. <laughs> uh, don't bet on it. Uh, well, it's like, I guess we'll just, just get into it here. Uh, could you share a bit about your background and uh, how you got started in music production? Yeah. Um, my background, I uh, was kicking around as like a little punk rock kid in New York City. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, I mean, that, Really, honestly, I hate, I hate, I hate saying like, "Oh, it all started when I was born," and my <laughs> my dad put a a, a T three thirty three forty in my in my hands right as right, soon as my mom shit me out. But it, you know, that, that's honestly what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, my my dad was my dad was a musician. Uh, it used to be in a band back in the seventies, and and uh, had a bunch of recording equipment in the house. Still liked to make demos, and he would get. He, taught me how to use all the machines so he could make make his demos and I can track him and he wouldn't have to bother doing two things at once and that that's pretty much that sparked it I mean I could pretty much tell you tell you the moment when I when I when I realized like oh this is the coolest shit like when you could track something and then overdub it and hear play back to what you played uh, I still get like that type of I mean it sounds corny but it's true uh, that type of like fuzzy feeling whenever I open up Pro Tools I and mean, say what you want about Pro Tools. It's just the fact that you could like, you know, manipulate music mm -hmm. post is the coolest shit to me. Um, you know, it's, so that, I was doing that as a kid, like really single digits. And then, uh, I mean, my dad taught me how to play guitar and piano and ended up picking up bass. And then I saw a band for the first time. I don't remember what it was. Oh, you know what it was? It wasn't a band. It was my third grade teacher's boyfriend came to school and played piano. And like all the girls were like, oh, shit. And I was like, oh, so that's how it works because you know, I'm an ugly guy. And I was like, okay, got to learn how to play that. And then learning how to play instruments led to, you know, playing in bands and kicking around as a teenager. Then recording bands uh, for like, you know, money so I could buy my own pot and uh am i allowed to talk about this type of yeah thing? yeah yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah totally fine <laughs> um, it's a music industry come on <laughs> yeah man i mean i was you know i was 15 years old and then um i got tired of playing in bands because it's a lot of work and i realized that like i i like being in the studio more than playing with a band uh, I like jamming and I like playing on stage, but the work that comes with being in a band and making sure that like you got five people on the same page working for the same goal and then being a songwriter and the arranger and all this stuff, it's just like, it's a fucking, it's so much work. So, um, and I really liked working, like you get tired of the same four people or three people every in the band, you know, and I liked meeting other band bands and helping them make music and, I, I like spreading myself around that way. Um, and it felt good to help people achieve their music goals. Um, because I, you know, it was, that's a music goal of mine. I didn't know it yet, but that was, that was a, a big part of it was the satisfaction I got out of helping other people get as excited about music as I am excited as I am, uh, which happens pretty easily. So uh, that's it. And then that, that, that uh, led to me just sort of, trying to produce for a living uh, on accident i became a dj and back when i was djing in new york city um remixes were a thing like blog blogs for remixes were a thing uh yeah like these aggregators that would scour blogs and put your remixes on a chart were a thing so i thought to myself uh i'm i mean it was really hard to go from studio to studio and be like, Hey, can I intern? Can I wash your bathroom? And like, you know, hopefully sitting on a session because there were no studios were closing down in New York at the time. And, uh, that was, that wasn't an option. So I figured, well, 
what, what's, what's an engineer really doing? They're, they're, they're getting something competitive for an audience. So why don't I just take a song that's popular already, remix it, and then play it as a DJ and then get the audience excited for my remix uh, and in hopes that the artist or the label or whatever, somebody would come back to me and be like, hey, I liked your remix you know, do that for me and have it be official rather than bootleg. And that's, that's what happened. That was the plan and it actually worked. Um, and that got my foot in the door with production and mixing. Uh, and I worked a lot on pop records for a while and a lot of EDM stuff and a lot of production for DJs who needed it and mixing for DJs who needed it uh, and pop artists. And then that kind of got, t- uh, kind of, felt like work and uh i kind of missed working with you know the hustling motherfuckers that are just trying to get their shit out um so i kind of diverted i went back to you know back to my roots as a 16 year old punk rock kid with a with a computer going to the you know someone's garage and tracking them on Uh, and that's 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 where uh that's where i'm ended where i ended up and uh it's that's where we are today, man. You know, helping helping independent artists uh, compete with artists that like you know have an endless budget because uh, now you know now more than ever it's expensive to make music. Um, so the the value that I like to bring to my clients and my my stable of artists is that uh, we can compete and we can do it. Uh, I don't want to say on a budget, but you know, on a budget that's smaller than a major label's budget and compete and have them have them have them give them access to a career on their own terms you know that i think well, is is yeah go for it yeah no it's good Taylor, can you tell us about a project that you're particularly proud of uh like what made it special oh you know what um i just well there's two uh one's a little sentimental and one is uh I mean, all sentimental but the, well, the first one is the the most recent one, uh, there's a punk band. In fact, their their song is dropping tomorrow. Uh, it's a punk band in San Diego. So I, I just moved to San Diego from New York City. Uh, kind of because it was like, and I needed some sun because your boy is a pale, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, <laughs> so uh, when I got here, uh, there was this punk band that I liked, and their name's Cardboard Boxer. And they had just put out an album uh, February of 2022. I think around the winter was when the winter. I really liked it, and um, turned out we had a mutual connection. So I hit them up and I was like, "Hey, you know, I'd like to do some some work for you. Uh, are you going to put out any music anytime soon?" And uh, they they did. They they were putting out some new music, and uh, we they were like, "Yeah, you know, let, let's let's see what happens." And we 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 started on one song, and it really turned into a nice relationship and it was like the first time in a real long time um that i felt like i was really making like it felt like it felt like like high school but in a good way you know Mm -hmm. when you're in it and when it's just like let's fucking make something that rips and everyone everyone does what they're supposed to do um the band never really had too much yeah and it felt fun you know and it was like you feel good about everything. You know, you feel good that you're getting paid to have fun because, you know, you feel good that you're getting paid to get, make records. You feel good that you're helping a band that like, you know, achieve a next, uh, the next level of like sonic goodness. Um, you know that you can bring something to the table that they don't have already. Um, and you could form, you know, fun relationships like, cause that, it just felt good, man. It felt like something that I hadn't, had in a long time because uh, a lot of the records that i worked on in the past uh for you know artists that were mainstays or artists that had you know already had established a pretty solid career there's a lot of anxiousness that comes with those those artists because they have to survive you know they have to maintain their level of success in order to survive so you don't get you don't get the time to sort of like pick their brain about what turns them on uh, what they're what they're trying to do what's their mission in life you know with music uh, you don't get to talk about that you it's really like this is what you want and you got to deliver and you got to deliver like an olympic motherfucker otherwise you know they're going to get pissed or they get worried 
that's, you know, and I'm an anxious boy. And when someone gets anxious, I get anxious. So I, I want to, you know, I want to steer the ship in a, into calm waters always. But with this, with this particular project with Cardboard Boxer, they were on our uncharted territory. And instead of like getting nervous, they were just like, cause it's punk. It's like, sort of like, fuck yeah, let's just do it. You know, it was, it was, it was never like a, a, a micromanaging of, of aesthetics, which is now the, you know, the, 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 the ecosystem of the modern music industry is like this endless, uh, conceptualization of aesthetic before even reaching the core it should be the, the other way around you know your core uh, establishes your aesthetic but here it's like okay so and so did this so we have to have you know our base needs to be like this and like um it's a double-edged sword it's good because it raises awareness in the artist when you know their oh, their ears are open they're like oh you know i hear this so and the bad thing is they want to just copy it you know it's not like i want to i like this flavor Let's mix it with some of my personality to make something new for somebody. Uh, it's almost like they have a lack of trust in their own taste, which is why they why engineers are are more important than ever because we, hopefully the engineer or producer or mixer trusts their own taste uh, enough so that they can deliver for the artist. Um, but it's a weird it's a weird you know it's a weird ecosystem in that in that regard. But with this particular project, it was just like fun and like cool to try new things and shit like it was like i knew that there was no one was going to be like i don't know i don't like that you know um uh, i think we had like one scary moment where uh there was like a drum part that i had suggested and then i cut it on the pre-production reel and uh they listened back and they were just like i don't know if we like it and i was like look man just you know sleep with it and I don't think I've ever, I, dude, I haven't said that phrase in years because you don't have time to sleep on it, you know? Right. And I was like, you know, I just sleep on it. And like a week later, like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. And I'm like, God, this is great. This is really good. Well, I guess that leads to the next question is like, how would you describe your approach or your philosophy to making music or mixing? Uh, they're both the same and they're both uh, heavily reliant. And this is just a personal thing. Uh, sure. I don't know. I don't know the universal way. Uh, I don't even, I don't think there's a universal way. I think everything is because we all have our own set of ears and our own set of tastes and our own personality. Instincts, and and like the, personality yeah, instincts. That, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I, I got to let the music tell me where it wants to go. Uh, even if I'm writing it, like if mm -hmm. I'm writing it, it's usually based on like maybe a riff or a sound. I like that kind of just like excites me in a certain way. Um, and I just sort of like, I'll listen to it over and over again and envision what, you know, what wants to be there. What do I feel like it needs to be there? And I, I try to, I try to make it as little as, as, as non convoluted as possible. Like uh, I want other people to be instinctually excited about it. And, and I have to rely upon my musical sensibilities. It's just like a human being, not like as me. As like, if I were a, you know, 65 year old mom, you know, I walked into the room, into the studio, I would want her to be like, hey, this is cool. You know, uh, uh, I'm not a 65 year old mom yet, but I'd like to think that <laughs> <when> I am. <laughs> I, just, I would think that the shit that I'm making is cool. <laughs> right. Well, can you explain how uh, X Machina loudspeakers have uh, impacted your work? Do they provide any unique benefits that other speakers don't? Oh man. I mean, I think you know what I'm going to say, but, uh, yes, yes, they do. Uh, they had, uh, uh, I know I've known you for a long time, Dan, like, and I, I, I owe you a lot, but I think I owe you the most for ex machina. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, the, the, the jet. Okay. I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into an advertisement. And I'm trying not to. I'm really going to try not to. Uh, so I'll stay as neutral as I can. But on, let your, I've worked let your, on a lot of... let, your, let your freak flag fly. Okay. Well, and, uh, <laughs> I've I've definitely slept naked with these speakers on more than one occasion because, <laughs> of, because I'm so grateful for them. Uh, no, I've used a lot of speakers. Okay. Here's the truth. 
I've used a lot of speakers in the time that I got started up until now. And, you know, I'd like to think that I'll never stop learning and never stop uh, honing my listening ability and the connection from ear to brain to heart. Uh, but the ex machinas are the quickest path to that because they just tell you what's there. And I know that's so corny, dude. That's every fucking speaker advertisement ever. I could trust these speakers. Okay, look, dude, here's, I've used speakers. And I, I, I've realized through the years, it's not the, just the speaker that you have to trust. It, the marriage between your, your, your like musical sensibility that I was talking about earlier, your, your emotions, your brain, everything that makes up you and also your ears and the speaker need to be in sync. Like it has, the, the connection has to be a real connection. Like uh, the speaker is like your friend, you know, there, there are people in the world that like, I could just listen to talk, and, you know, like you, we could, we, we talk for hours on, on shit that I know most people would walk out of the room within 15 minutes. In fact, there's been times in your shop where people have done that, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you know, but we could, we could talk to each other. Like we understand one another. It's the same thing with the speakers. Like, so, and I've worked on a lot, I mean, a lot of, and, and, and the, this is also a testament to you, dude. Um, I think you understood from, you know, early on in our, in our relationship, uh, how I like to hear things, how I like music to be presented in a way that excites me and gets my brain working. Um, mm -hmm. And there were two, there were two speakers that I think my best mixes were made on uh, one being the ex machina and the, the other being the Adam P 11s back in the day. Now I wasn't right, right. good back in the day. I wasn't good yet, but like, and I'm not comparing the two speakers, uh, in terms of like their their specs and and how they behave, but both speakers showed me music in a way that I like to listen, and that's what made me mix better. And then I would graduate to you know more expensive speakers or whatever you know my favorite mixers were using, and I've had every I have all of them, and you know some my mixes would just sometimes get worse, and, and sometimes they would get better, but it would I would have to work for them to get better. And I would listen to, I would, for years, for years, I would listen to some of my mixes and be like, I remember, I know how hard I worked on this mix, but it doesn't sound like it worked that hard. It does. I don't hear, I don't hear it. You know, now it's the opposite. I don't feel like I work enough and it sounds like I toil, you know, with the ex machinas. Like it's just, I know that there's some technological advancements that are implanted into these speakers, but that, you know, I don't want to talk about any of that shit. It's just, they, they, they show me music the way I like to hear music. They agree with me. They don't fatigue my ears. Uh, I could, I could, if I have to toil and I do it all the time, if I have to toil on a part that just like, for some reason, whether it was too wound up in production or the arrangement doesn't facilitate the, addition of a certain sound i can toil and it will not i don't have to take a break you know and if i don't have to take a break i mix quicker um i don't even you know on this stereotypical shit yeah you could trust them i mean uh the bass response is is amazing i don't need a sub uh there's you know all that stuff i mean any 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 any, any endorsed person from any speaker company is going to tell you the same shit and I, if i could say anything that's different or worthwhile it's that like it's it, it shows you stuff you understand without having to get acquainted you know what what you will get acquainted with is how you mix and you may have to like in my case you may have to relearn shit dude i've sold equipment because of these speakers I don't, I was like, I don't need this. I don't fucking need this compressor. I don't need this EQ. I thought I did because it was cool, you know, mm -hmm. and, but I don't need it. And it, it, I can boil my rig down to the path of least resistance. And for me, uh, that's what I like that. And that's how that it works with my like, uh, work ethic, mm -hmm. the path of least resistance. I want the, I want the lowest common denominator. Uh, well, and I want it to, you would say that it's made your, your work process simpler or faster? Yeah, like, simpler, a, faster, more fun. It's mm -hmm. exciting to it, – it, it, 
there's a really nice thing about being able to sit down to work mm -hmm. and not have to be like, okay, my brain has to be on, you know, right. uh, it's, it's especially when it comes to music, because I've listened to me, I've listened to music more than I've worked on music. I think everybody has, you know, that's the reason why you get into working with music is because you listen to it enough where you're like, the, the power that it has over me, I want to be able to, you know, share with others. And it, it's inspiring and compelling and all those adjectives or adverbs rather. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll listen to this shit and I just get to listen to the music. I don't have to worry about my, like, oh, you know what, the, like, the highs on this are shrill. So in order for me to get this to translate, I got to really, like, you know, the NS10 effect, where it's like, I got to get these motherfuckers to kill my ear so that I know when I listen to it someplace else, the highs are there. Or, mm -hmm. like, you know, other other bookshelf speakers where it's like you got to get them to rattle for them for you to know that there's bass there. Uh, or for other high-end speakers that sound great, but the access is so small, you got to be paying attention to, am I leaning in? You know, am I right. pulling back? It, um, and that's even more important in, in bedroom studios or studios where you're converting a space in your home that wasn't built around, a, you know, a listening position. Uh, that's even so, like, I mean, the evolution of your speaker for the – for now, the way people make music in, they're not thinking about acoustics. You know, they could barely afford a recording budget. You wouldn't even build out your room, you know? Like, there's five people that have a built out room. So, like, this, you well, can do, you, you've achieved okay. something that you, that, that wasn't possible before, where it's like the speakers are going to take care of it because of how they're engineered. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, it's not, uh, it's unfortunate, but it's not a surprise. I mean, you know, acoustic treatment is incredibly unsexy relative to, you know, yeah. racks full of knobs and, you know, pretty right. lights and meters and all sorts of things. So, but yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think like it is something I've known for even longer, long before I Machina, it's always been like, you know, how you hear is easily the most important tool you could have in your space and i mean that starts yeah. with the room like start to before you put speakers in you know it's sort of like or actually more importantly it's like get the marriage right between your room and a speaker before you worry about yeah. anything else because yeah. if you don't have yeah. that right you don't you know you're you're kind of flying blind at that point right so even more so uh, the marriage between your ear and your brain like yeah. people don't didn't take time to understand like how they listen you know i remember back when uh when people were starting to move into the box, like we're around 2010, 2012, where it's like just everyone's selling their gear and like everyone's in the box and they were using like Serban as the example. So he's making these hit records and whatever. And there'd be the, the, uh, this adage that people would say like, trust your ear, not the gear. First off, dude, just because it rhymes, stop, you know? <laughs> yeah. And how am I supposed to trust my ear, dude, if my speakers are garbage? Like, right. or if you're, if you're using like, you know, like you'd be like, oh, this guy's in the box, dude. I know people who literally pick out a hit mixer and just mimic their rig. And it's like, yeah, how, that makes no sense, man. That makes no sense. Like one person's, like you're, you're a totally different person. Yeah, you. We don't even know what happens to music and sound once it enters our ear canal. It's mm -hmm. fucking no man's land, you know. So, like, the first thing you got to be looking at before you're even talking about knobs or in the box, out of the box, whatever. Who gives a shit? Twenty twenty three now, but like, is how your speakers like interact with you and mm -hmm. and how it makes how it makes you feel. You know, I gotta mm -hmm. say, dude. The one weird thing that, that I didn't ever thought I would have, the, 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 the skill that I honestly never would have, would have thought I would acquire, um, I can go into any room now. And based on what I know from the ex machinas, any room, any speaker, and I can tell like, oh, something's weird. Because I've listened, I put in enough hours on the ex mocks where it, it, if it tells me something, I take it as, you know, as a fact. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. And, and I know that it's a fact because I'll, I'll make a record and play it in any system and not have like, oh, shit, hope it's going to fucking, you know, right. I know it's going to do well 
you know, I don't care about a country room car, whatever. I know it's going to do well because it does well on these speakers. And I can go to some other room and mix on another pair of speakers and have that same amount of confidence because my ears used to hearing things oh, in sorry. a way that I feel is normal, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, sure. And that's something that like, I mean, there's a handful of mixers that I, I know have that skill, like on birth, you know, that I've seen them. And I would always be like, holy shit, dude, that's the reason why they are who they are. But like, maybe that's the reason why they are who they are, because they just trusted what they were hearing all those years. And then they bring that same confidence into another room and they could fucking mix. And that's what I mean. It's it's pretty fantastic. I've never I've never experienced anything like that where I can I can go into any room now and just be like. Yeah, this is weird. I mean, I may not be able to do the best mix possible or a mix that's like, you know, comparable to what's on what I would do if I was mixing on the X Mox, but like I know I'm I'm I'll be able to navigate myself in a session. So if I have to go to a studio and record and they got like, you know, NS tens and some shit, like I'll know what's going on with the low end there. Just based on because there are things that your your speakers reveal and it's not just sound, it's the behavior of certain frequencies how things behave like it's it, 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 there are characteristics of frequencies that speakers don't show you you know it's not just being flat or like oh i can hear the bass here and whatever you know it's like there's frequencies be have a certain type of behavior they have a they have a rise time and a fall time and it's different as you go up and down the frequency band it's very easy to pick that out so if I hear some weird behavior in the bass, I know I may not have the tone, you know, pinned because of what the room and what the speakers are doing, but I can definitely tell if something's weird, you know, and I can make a note of it and then come fix it back in my room if I'm tracking or I could, you know, do my best to do something that's non-destructive. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they're they're worth their weight in gold, dude. They're worth their they're worth their weight in mozzarella. Because I value that more than gold. <laughs> so, uh, lastly, I guess uh, what's what's the best piece of advice you've ever received in your career, and like how has it shaped you as a producer, or engineer, or whatever hat you want to like wear? Um, the best piece of advice I've ever received um, was uh, well, there's also two. One was okay. don't try and do everything. Uh, because, you know, I, I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, I, when I started, I was a producer, mixer, writer, you know, and I, and, and as I got jobs, I tried to convince the client, like, oh, I also do this. So let me do this for you. And mm -hmm. then, uh, I met someone who I would call a mentor and they were, they asked me what I want to do, you know, you know, like, what do you want, you know, with your career? And I was like, well, I want to produce and mix cool shit. And they'd be like, well, why? Why do you want to do everything? You know, what do you, you know, just do what you're good at and then get really good at one thing. And, you know, that'll seep into the other things you want to do. You know, your understanding will broaden much quicker. Uh, that's one. And the other one was uh, work like you're the only person that does your job. My dad told me that uh, when uh, I was younger and was feeling insecure. Uh, because like there, you know, I was, I think every, every, anyone works in any kind of creative industry because you have to keep your ear to the ground to see what's going on in the current, you know, time and age and environment. You, you could feel insecure. And, uh, my father was like, don't pay attention to any of that shit. Just work like the only motherfucker that does you, does what you do. And, uh, that I, I like go back to that a lot now, you know, where mm -hmm. I'm like, if I'm starting to, starting to feel like a sensitive boy, which is nothing wrong with being a sensitive boy. I'm a sensitive boy. Dude. I'm a sensey boy. Uh, <laughs> but like, I don't want it to affect my work. I want it, I want it to be, I want to be confident. I want, I want people to, uh, when they listen to it, uh, not hear me, you know? And I feel like they hear me when I'm in my head and I'm always in my head when I'm thinking about other, other mixers, other songs I like is how is this going to stack up? And it's sort of like, if I'm the if I was the only person on this planet that did this shit, I would be working in a different way, and that's how I like to work. You know, okay. uh, you're the only so like the unique, only motherfucker like, on the planet. Yeah, like be unique in that, I guess, in a way, right? That's what it kind of means. Like, be like, what? 
I I think it's I think don't be afraid to be yourself. You know, so mm. if you like something, do it. And if you don't right. like something, don't do it. And it's 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 simpler than it it sounds simpler than it actually is because <laughs> in, in music we compete with everybody. You know, we compete right. about with the records that are on playlists, and we compete with other mixers, or we compete with you know some clown on YouTube. And uh, if we didn't pay attention to any of that, we would be ourselves. Right. And 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 if we're true to our taste and we're true to ourselves. Uh, we can rely on like, you know, the human condition of like, if it, if I get excited about it in its simplest form, you're going to get excited about it. And you're, we're the same thing. We're human. You know, we have the same motion. Right. That's great. Well, like, so where, where can people find out more about you? What's, you know, online, Instagram, Facebook, farmers only.com dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Instagram, my, my, my screen name is, uh, my screen name on AOL. <laughs> what what dude holy shit uh in, richie beretta everywhere so it's just like you know, if you go on instagram richie beretta I, I i mainly use instagram and twitch a lot um richie beretta anywhere tiktok but i don't i don't really do that shit anymore uh elon musk canceled my twitter elon musk canceled my twitter <laughs> straight up I, I i every now and again i'll like try and look at what's going on on twitter and uh, I I couldn't log in and my account was gone and I was just like, wow. yeah, that's it for me with that. So yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 highly involved in the engineering community, especially on the independent side. Um, so I encourage anybody to hit me up. DMs are always open. Uh, Rich Brett on Instagram is probably the best way to get in contact with me. Um, in fact, here in San Diego, we're, we just started this sort of local engineering uh, group slash meetup that we do once a month where if you make records in any way, shape or form, if it's a hobby, if it's, you know, your career, uh, we hang out with one another. We find out what's going on. We complain. We, you know, fucking we act thankful together. You know, it's just cool to, like, be in a community and mm -hmm. um, that 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 I that are, that's a big thing for me. Uh, I don't think the engineering community is as tight as it should be. Um, so anything that I can do to sort of like seam it together, even if it's on a local scale, uh, I'll try and do it. So yeah, cool. uh, if you're an engineer out there, you want to be my friend, where you can be my friend, you know, awesome. I need, you know, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's, that's good to know. Um, I'll follow up with you. Uh, if there's, a you know, other resources for that kind of contact you know, the group and I'll, I'll include it with the, with the interview here. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So cool. Well, man, I gotta say, I really appreciate you doing this, taking, taking the time and it's, it's been a blast. Hell yeah. I love you, Dan. Yeah. I love any, you too, anything, buddy. Anytime, man. I love yeah. talking to you. So, yeah. we'll, cut, we'll catch up because there's something I want to like ask you about, uh, but we can do that offline, but okay, cool. I'll catch so, up with you, buddy.